Good morning again, everyone. This is James Nussbaumer, and this is part two uh, of the series. But hang on a second with me. We're just uh, just came out of the second round, uh, second part of our meeting at the Eisenhower Center here at the Villages in um, beautiful Florida, about 70 miles northeast of uh, Orlando. It's a huge uh, retiree area. Uh, I call it the military center or veteran center, but it's actually it's just a huge complex called the Eisenhower uh, Center. And we just uh, finished up with a meeting and we were talking about sentencing disparity, which I talk about in my books. And by the way, let me explain that I am the author of these two great books. The first one is The Master of Everything, A Story of Mankind in the World of Illusion We Call Life. And its sequel is Mastering Your Own Spiritual Freedom. Both are on sale everywhere books are sold <laughs> and published by Ozark Mountain Publishing Company. And uh, in book two, Mastering Your Own Spiritual Freedom, we go into great lengths about uh, a situation that occurred with me and someone that I had met while I was away. Um, and for those of you that don't know my story, what I mean away, meaning um, eight long years in a state prison for a foolish securities violation. and that's why we're, I'm giving some examples on sentencing disparity, and we want to bring to people's attention. And even though my books are on a spiritual level, um, spiritual but non-religious uh, level, it, they're all designed to help us overcome what the world dishes us. But let me start by saying that you know, um, when we, you know, we we all have uh, you know. Uh, problems that we have to come over we're trying to, to trying to you know get beyond and we all make mistakes in this world don't we sure we do and you know if we can just get to a point to where we overlook the mistakes that many of us make and understand that there's something better that um, is beyond that um, you know it, it it can make for a better a better life for all of us and and that is really uh, in my books I talk about forgiveness and I write uh, pertaining to the principle uh, around the principles contained in the Course in Miracles which is basically about forgiveness and it's overlooking our errors to what we really are behind the, the, the simple errors that we make but you know let me not get too far off track on here <clears throat> stick to what the conversation was in the meeting here because I was urged to go ahead and make another video so we have stepped right out here in a little corridor outside of the main room where we had the meeting. But let's talk about you know prison reform. Uh, you know prison reform as well as criminal justice system reform is a continual political concern. Yet there's one factor in which basically everyone has come to terms on is that the USA, United States of America's prison populace, is escalating beyond control. In part one of this blog article. I uh, told about experiences like the 78-year-old William who was sent to prison over punctured tires. That These kind of things have shown me firsthand the bitterness that resides in the prison system. I have learned that few prisoners are able to show or refuse to display their true feelings due to fear and resentment of the injustices that they have suffered themselves and witnessed imposed on others. This makes for rage toward prison officials and beyond, spilling into other inmates and prison life in general. You know, routine injustice is deeply rooted into the justice system, which is used by many judges, prosecutors, public defenders, prison operators, and, and others for personal gain in public life. Clearly, there are many prisoners who do belong behind bars. There's no doubt about that. But this situation is not about their debt to society. All my years, I have been a proud American and a firm believer that democracy is the best system in the world. I have always realized that, of course, as with anything else, it has its pitfalls or bad apples, we could say. But now I have witnessed close up the other side where a mockery of the justice system is being played out over money and power. Judges and prosecutors are locking individuals behind bars for political reasons and gaining votes as they prove their tough on crime agenda, regardless of the accused's individual circumstances or due process. That is, of course, unless there is plenty of this stuff plenty of money to hand over to iron out a situation. 
Prisoners do exaggerate, though, and uh, though often they do not, they, they, that often they exaggerate out of a longing for change. And this is the only way that many prisoners can express their disgust. At first, I discounted most of the stories I heard while I was in there myself. But as with Willie, who I talked about in the first um, uh, part of this blog, I discovered that many of these tragic tales were all too true. I can honestly add my opinion here that the founding fathers of this country who wrote the Constitution and suffered to defend it would be ashamed of what has happened to politics in the United States and all for the price of personal gain. In my second book here of the ever-developing series, Mastering Your Own Spiritual Freedom, I ask my readers to explore within themselves one serious question. Now think about this. Who is there in this United States of America today, or in the entire world for that matter, that you can choose as a role model, as a role model for your children? Think about that. Is there really anyone? Is there anyone at all? I do believe there have been other factors involved in these criminal cases, including mine, where I was sentenced to 10 years for a foolish, foolish securities violation. But there are, there are many other factors involved in, in many of the criminal cases, and many who should be punished do go free. But as the stories accumulated, and I checked them out as best as I could while I was in there myself, it was easy to see why sentencing disparity is the chief cause of all the bitterness in prison. If this kind of thing were occurring in other countries under communism or dictatorships, the bitterness would not be born. But in the land of the free and the home of the brave, however, when these things continually happen, we are right to be angry at the travesty. Take a look at the case of inmate George, the owner of a large retail shopping franchise. George shot and killed at point blank his card playing partner during a game of high stakes poker. Expensive lawyers were able to iron out a plea bargain from murder to involuntary manslaughter, and George received a four-year prison term. Then there was Terrence, an illiterate young man with virtually no education who was serving 12 years in prison for possession of three pounds of marijuana. Terrence was caught up in a bind, about to lose his home to foreclosure with a wife and two small children. He tried his hand at earning cash as a delivery boy for a big time drug dealer. He would not snitch on the drug dealer in order to get a better plea deal because he feared for the safety of his family. Since he wouldn't cooperate, the prosecutor demanded he receive a maximum sentence. Such injustices of the system are everywhere, though not in every case. In many cases, justice has been served. But those numberless cases where there is not, where this is not so, can be very painful, as really was with my own case. And the bitterness extends, thank God I was able to get over my own bitterness, and the bitterness extends when one comes to know the victim face to face. It fosters rebellious attitudes toward the law, towards the law, and even among those who know they deserve their own sentences. Often it's the inexperienced lawbreaker like Willie over punctured tires, serving three years, 78 years old, who puts his trust in the judicial process and does expect to pay his debt to society for his, for his heir, only to be taken advantage of by zealous judges and prosecutors who consign them to the prison system to meet demands that voters are totally unaware of. When are we going to bring into this land a system with the sole purpose of helping and protecting society, one that is not used to help deepen and fill up the pockets of the greedy? This brings me to Doc's story. Doc told me he pled guilty without a plea bargain, just as I had done myself, because I didn't know any better. Doc was later told that his lawyer traded him off to another client with more money who could pay for investigative expenses. Doc had a small business that went belly up, which put him behind on his bills until he ran out of money. He could not pay for any investigative expenses that the lawyer demanded or, or suggested, 
and and he hoped and all the lawyer could suggest to him was plead guilty and just hope mercy from the judge and this was based over child support arrearages which had reached the felony level over child support arrears when doc contacted a government agency called child support enforcement for help they would not listen to him until he could get the following year's income tax return to prove his hardship the enforcement agency had no choice but to report his arrearages to the courts. As Doc stood in front of the judge with no plea bargain at the sentencing, he noticed a patriotic banner hanging next to the American flag that said, the land of the free and justice for everyone. He said a quick prayer to God and trusted that the judge would treat him fairly. Instead, Doc was, giving, was given a four-year prison term and was scolded scolded by the judge for his poor fatherhood and non-support of his 10-year-old son. Doc told me that the judge had no idea how he did truly support his son and that like many families, he had merely been hit by hard, by hard and difficult times. So now Doc is literally doing hard time where he certainly has no chance of being able to recover or financially support his son. He writes to his boy often, supporting his son's dreams of one day being an Ohio State football player. Doc is sure his son will achieve that goal because he works hard at his football game, and Doc has helped him. But child support enforcement and the judge didn't look at it that way. A Course in Miracles asks us to contemplate this question. What if we all were able to be increasingly aware of the oneness that we all share, which I call the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit's consistent and constant communication between us all in order that we may live our free will. We can't see him with our eyes nor hear him with our ears, but he is there. How then are we able to recognize his presence? When I, when I first met 78-year-old Willie that day in the overcrowded county jail cell, we felt a sense of joy that, that inspired both of us, a connection, if you will. Most of us have experienced this before, but we shrug it off as simply having something in common with one another. You know, does this seem familiar to you? Have you ever experienced that? Don't you think there's more to it than that? A Course of Miracles goes on to help us to be aware that if you inspire joy in others and react, if you inspire, it, 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 if we, <laughs> A Course of Miracles helps us to be aware and to understand that if we inspire joy and others react to that joy, even though we are not experiencing joy ourselves, there must be something in us that is capable of producing it. Wouldn't you say? If what is inside us can produce joy, and if we see that it does produce joy in others, we must be giving of ourselves, and therefore we are not lacking a thing. In order to continue to not be lacking, we must receive that joy as well, which others have available in their lackless supply of joy. This is how giving and receiving can be seen as two distinct aspects of the same thought. When we can begin to see this light on a larger scale and incorporate this way of extending our thoughts in our pursuit to get a grip on crime, we can learn that what we fight, we only get more of. Likewise, what we extend, we get more of, and love is intended to extend. Here is what legendary author Henry David Thoreau had said, and I had just mentioned this quote in the in the room over here, and I got a really uh, nice standing ovation. And uh, one man had a little pocketbook of the book Walden on him, and he raised it up as I gave this quote. But Henry David Thoreau had said to us in his famous book Walden about his experience of being jailed at one time for not paying income tax in a particular year when he was hit with hard times. Here's what Henry David Thoreau had to, Henry David Thoreau had to say. You who govern public affairs, what need have you to employ punishments? Love virtue and the people will be in other words, love virtue and the people will be virtuous. The virtues of a superior man are like the wind. The virtues of a common man are like the grass. 
the grass, when the wind passes over it, bends. Hey, everyone, to the best of you, to the best in you, to that inner joy that, that you are about. Hey, I'm just a regular guy. I really am. I just happened to write two books to overcome my own and help me overcome my own adversities. And they're, and they're moving along quite, quite a bit. And I hope you become a reader uh, and pick up a copy of each of my books. Down below in the description box of this YouTube video, there is a link that you can click on that will take you to my website. And there you will see my books displayed and, and how to purchase them and my, my many blog articles. If you're already at my website and enjoying my blogs, I appreciate uh, the confidence that you have in me. I appreciate you reading about me. And maybe one day I'll see you at an event somewhere around the United States. I'll be traveling quite a bit. And if I do see you and you are at a live event, please come up to me and say, hey, I seen your video or hey, I read your blog. I would just love that. But uh, bye for now and I've got to go. I've taken up more time than I expected. And uh, this will be uh, uploaded to YouTube probably within about a week or so. So you'll be able to get in touch with me there. Thank you again and I, I hope this hit home with you. God bless.